In 1940, France, a European superpower, was crushed under the onslaught of German forces. The French had to sign a humiliating peace in Compiègne, in a train car. The city and train car were the same, as where Germany signed their capitulation 22 years prior. Many historians tend to not shy away from the conclusion that the French army was not good enough, and that they fought poorly. However, one of the most terrifying tank attacks came at the French in May of 1940, from where they least expected it, in the Battle of Ston. The French had fought so hard, that one German officer compared the Battle of Ston to Monte Cassino and even Stalingrad. On the 11th of May 1940, German Panzer Ace, Heinz Gudrian's tanks passed the wooded mountains of the Ardennes. Crushing an unfortunate French division in their path, the German units made it to the Meuse River. A portion of the forces crossed the river, engineers quickly built a bridge for vehicles, and the foothold was expanded the next morning. German divisions rushed towards the heights, south of the French city of Sedan, towards the small village of Ston. Famous French tanker, Captain Pierre Billet, commanded a Char B-1 bis tank, in this battle. The B-1 bis is arguably the most famous and popular French tank, of the 1940 campaign. Heavy B-1 bis tanks had their tracks went all the way around the hull, an archaic solution for the start of the 1940s. However, the thick armor and powerful armament, a 75mm howitzer and 47mm gun, made the French heavyweight the best tank in its class. May 15, 1940, was one continuous battle for Ston. The village changed hands several times. The French infantry continued to show little enthusiasm when supporting its armored forces. After two attacks, only three Char B-1s remained in action. During the Battle of Ston, Billet's B-1 bis, nicknamed Er, successfully broke through German defenses, where he pitted it against tanks of the 8th Panzer Regiment, consisting of Panzer III's and Panzer IV-D tanks. On one of Ston's streets, he met with a column of German tanks. They began to fire, while the B-1 bis was adjusting its fire. The French tank endured many shells without showing any sign of weakness. Billet ordered the 75mm gun to destroy the head tank of the column, and the rear tank, effectively blocking the other tanks. Then, he methodically shot up one tank after another, and moved on. The German guns were not powerful enough to cause the tank any harm. A second column encountered by Er, met the same fate. By the end of the day, Er fought against the outnumbering panzers and successfully knocked out a total of 13 tanks and two AT guns, including 11 Panzer III's and two Panzer IVs. During the engagement, the tank took on an estimated 140 anti-tank rounds, all of which failed to penetrate or cause major damage towards the B-1 bis. On the next day, only two B-1 bis tanks, Tunis and Mistral, turned 50 German trucks, tractors and APCs, several light tanks and AT guns into scrap metal in only half an hour. The easy destruction of the German tanks was aided by the dual tank guns used on the Char B-1, including the main gun, the 75mm ABS SA-35 howitzer, installed on the tank's front hull, and the secondary main gun, a 47mm SA-35 on the turret. At the same time, the Char B-1 bis 60mm thick armor was impervious against the German tank guns, which consisted of the 37mm L-45 on the Panzer III, and the 75mm L-24 howitzer on the Panzer IV-D tanks. Following the battle, the French were victorious for a moment, until the German army would later regain the ground. The battle for Ston continued for another week, but the Char B-1s did not participate. For Captain Billet, he would be captured and imprisoned by the German army, until he escaped and joined with the free French government in exile. He would act as chief of staff for Charles de Gaulle from 1942 to 1943, then would serve with the French 2nd Armoured Division after the Normandy landings, and would become commander of the 10th Division later that same year. He would go into politics after the war, until his retirement in 1968. He left the world at 86 years old on June 29, 1992. 
Even though both Er and Billet are gone, they should never be forgotten for their efforts in defending their homeland. If you have enjoyed this amazing story of courage and resilience, please do subscribe for more. Many thanks for watching.